Welcome to Quilting Kentucky Stories, a special series from Tales from the Kentucky Room. I am Sylvia Lovely, coach, teacher of writing, and particularly writing the stories of your life. The stories you will hear, most of them are from my writing students in the Carnegie Center for Literacy and Learning class entitled Writing the Stories of Your Life, or from opportunities I have had to coach budding writers. Some of these stories are funny, some sad, and sometimes both. They are not lengthy, but each adds on an exclamation point to life. Take a listen to Callie Matthews with her Strawberry Fields Forever in My Heart. She's a KET traffic specialist, which means she handles a variety of tasks, and she also volunteers for 12 Lions Film Festival, as well as Telesound, a concert series. She's a videographer, she's an internship director, media appearance coordinator, and archivist. Don't end a call without saying goodbye. I did, and I regretted it for 20 years. Mom's post-work ritual of shuffling through the day's mail, it was well underway, and she pulled a litter out of the mix, piled the rest on the counter, and handed it off to me. She had decided it was my job to give my grandmother a call and ask if she wanted us to open up the letter and let her know what was in it. I had protested a bit, because we were not exactly on speaking terms. Two decades later, I can't recall what the fight was about. But we must have exchanged some pretty intense verbal blows before she departed for a trip to see my aunt in South Florida. The fight, it happened for a couple of reasons. You see, my grandmother was the kind of woman who didn't like to share her concerns or issues with others because she felt it would burden them. So, as you can imagine, it came as a complete shock to my family and I when we found out that she had silently been battling depression and ovarian cancer. Well, the possibility of it anyways. We didn't actually know and still don't if she was or not. She also kept this little nugget to herself, or maybe she didn't even realize that she was losing her hearing, which of course led to many of our conversations evolving into screaming matches after she misheard something I said and thought I was being a little sassy and outright disrespectful. Look, I'll admit it, I was a hormonal 15-year-old. Of course I had my moments. I'm not completely innocent here. Growing up, I was quite shy and anxiety-riddled, and that version of me, it was still present, so I was pretty respectful. But my grandma, she was not hearing me properly, and that caused for some confusion on both of our ends. So it was quite shocking, and typically this would add gas to the proverbial fire. And I remember one day my mom had heard an eruption of what surely would have become another explosive disagreement kicking off. Wait, what do you think she said, Mom? My mom and I realized in that moment that my grandmother had misheard what I had said and that her auditory capabilities were not quite what they once were. And that did help alleviate the angst ever so slightly. But prior to my grandma's trip, tempers flared again. I forgot about her lack of hearing, and she thought I was being a little snot. She had another mishearing, and we had another disagreement, and things must have gotten volatile enough to where we didn't make amends for days. The tension, it was palpable from even 300 miles away and over the line. Click. I hung up the phone. I hung up the phone, and I didn't say goodbye. And frankly, I didn't even really think anything of it. I went about my usual business as a 15-year-old, probably fairly self-centered, and we were then gathered that evening at the dining room table, another delicious dinner my mom made, concluding when the phone rang from the kitchen. There was this outcrying of just disbelief, and tears started to stream down all four of our faces. I couldn't bear to be in the room to hear any more of what was being said. So I fled to the patio and I I clung on to the gazebo's iron legs for support. She was gone. The hours following the call, my parents, sister, and I, we learned of my grandmother's last day. She spent it gallivanting across South Florida with my aunt, who she hadn't gotten to see in about two years since we had moved north. And they went shopping and to the zoo. 
Also, my grandma unexpectedly suggested they indulge in a bottle of champagne. Honestly, her last day sounded to be the most alive she had been in what seemed like years. Honestly, I wish I could have spent that last day with her. We could have maybe reminisced about my childhood and how impactful she was in it. I, like many, I struggle surrendering to the truth of past actions. But once I stopped fighting myself and acknowledged this internal singe that's remained all these years, the healing, it finally began. And the salve to such deep emotional wounds, for me at least, is fond, love-filled memories. And one of them is of my grandma, rabbits, and strawberry fields. It was usually on blue sky, sunny summer days, We'd pile into Grandma's 93 Ford Escort station wagon, which eventually I would inherit as my first car, and we would venture to the Strawberry Farm. Cloud of dust never failed to chase the station wagon down the dirt road. The excitement, it would build, and the routine questions would begin. Are we going to see Charlie? Will he be there? At the tender age of five, I, for some reason, had this affection for the name Charlie. So on one of our visits, I bestowed one of the rabbits with the name Charlie. He's this beautiful, handsome, snow-white, ruby-eyed rabbit. And from then on, all of them that looked like that one were Charlie. The car would be put into park, seatbelt ripped off, and my tiny legs would get to running. Grandma knew exactly where I was going, so she would just grab the green plastic basket and meet me as I beelined over to the rabbit enclosure. Was my little Charlie there? Typically, yes, or at least a rabbit that looked and looked like him to where I could be convinced. Thank goodness that the world has a plethora of albino rabbits. And on the occasion there wasn't a Charlie rabbit there, my grandma would go ahead and tell me he was on a bunny vacation. Smart move, Grandma. Smart move. After confirming that Charlie was present, it was time to fill the basket with the sweet berries. I meticulously examine all of the rows to find the best ones. And then I go over and get to do my favorite part. Feed Charlie the berries. I thought it was hilarious because it was this funny thing that would happen where my wriggly little nose friend, he would get the appearance of wearing a lipstick. This simple afternoon would always instill so much joy and be full of so much laughter. But unfortunately, not all of our childhood memories really sit at the forefront of our minds as we get older. In the days of strawberry fields, they were lost somewhere in the sea of recollection until about three years ago. As stress surged outside our doors, I had to face a darkness like the one my grandmother fought, a darkness that was deeply rooted in the past by traumas endured through my life. Diagnosis, ADHD and post-traumatic stress disorder, accompanied by feelings of anxiety, depressive bouts, imposter syndrome, and for many, many years, a complete lack of self-confidence and self-worth. The days of masks and discouraging human contact created more bleak days than illuminated ones for me. There was no way around it. I had to face myself and all that I buried six feet under the surface. I was in a desperate need for some kind of form of comfort. So one day, I looked out my back door hoping for a sign that everything was gonna be okay. And there, on the ground, was a rabbit. The days of strawberry fields came rushing back, and my body was filled with warmth. This was the moment that the self-flagellation stopped and guilt ceased. I like to imagine this was my grandmother trying to give me some kind of assurance that I was seeking, and then continued to do so when I needed it most, because this was just the first rabbit sighting out of many over the next two years. Whether this was pure coincidence or was a sign from beyond, one thing I can say, and I feel like maybe, just maybe, I'm going to be heard when I say it, is Grandma, I love you. Thanks for listening to Quilting Kentucky Stories, a special series from Tales from the Kentucky Room. If you want to hear more episodes like these, you can subscribe, rate, and review Tales from the Kentucky Room 
on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Or you can visit us at lexpublib.org slash podcasts. That's L-E-X-P-U-B-L-I-B dot org slash podcasts. We'll be back with another patch for the quilt of Kentucky Stories.